The Toyota Land Cruiser and the Toyota 4Runner are both highly capable off-road vehicles. But which one has the better four-wheel drive system? Well, all Land Cruisers come with full-time four-wheel drive, whereas most 4Runners come with part-time four-wheel drive. So in this video, we're going to explain exactly how both systems work, what the advantages are of each, and ultimately discuss which system is superior. Worth mentioning, the Toyota Tacoma has the same four-wheel drive system as the 4Runner, so basically anything in this video that applies to the 4Runner also applies to the Tacoma. Alright, so let's start off with how the specifications differ for each vehicle. So both vehicles are going to be using a 2.4 liter inline four-cylinder turbocharged engine. That will be sending power through an eight-speed automatic transmission. However, you'll notice the Land Cruiser has more power and more torque as a result of using an electric motor sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. So more torque there with the Land Cruiser as it is a hybrid system, but using the same 2.4 liter turbo. Now, as we move past that 8-speed transmission, we get to the transfer case, and here's where things differ. So the Land Cruiser has a full-time four-wheel drive system versus the 4Runner uses a part-time four-wheel drive transfer case. So the difference here with the Land Cruiser, you're always powering all four wheels. You're either in four high or you're in four low. For the 4Runner, you can be in two high, meaning driving just the rear wheels. You can be in four high or you can be in four low, so low gear with all four wheels driven. Now the big difference between these two transfer cases is that the Land Cruiser's transfer case has a center differential which allows for it to drive on pavement with all four wheels being driven versus the 4Runner with a part-time four-wheel drive transfer case there is no center differential meaning the front speed and the rear speed are locked and thus you cannot drive it on pavement or you'll have binding within that system. So the Land Cruiser has a nominal 40-60 torque split 40% to the front, 60% of the torque to the rear. This can vary depending on that center differential. And there are no exceptions when it comes to this Land Cruiser. They all come with the hybrid engine with more power and they all come with full-time four-wheel drive versus there are plenty of exceptions with the 4Runner. So you can get the hybrid and get the additional power and efficiency that comes along with a hybrid system. You also have different drive configurations. So you could purchase a 4Runner with just just rear wheel drive, you can purchase it with part time four wheel drive, and in certain trims, uh, for example, the Limited with the hybrid as well as the Platinum, you actually can get it with the full time four wheel drive system, meaning exactly the same as far as the four wheel drive system. But the majority of the Forerunner options are going to come with that part time four wheel drive system. And one tiny exception for the Tacoma, I mentioned an eight speed automatic, that is what the Tacoma has. However, there also is the option for a six-speed manual with the Tacoma, not the 4Runner. Okay, so all of the real differentiation between the Land Cruiser and the 4Runner is happening within the transfer case, so we need to understand how this works. So the transfer case is made up of several sections. You have your input here coming from your transmission into the transfer case. You then have your low range planetary gear set that is then sending power through the torsion differential in the case of the Land Cruiser. Then we are traveling to the chain assembly, which is powering your front tires. And you also have your output going to your rear tires. So you can see that transfer case there sending that power to a rear e-locker. So you have a locking differential in the back and then you send the power to the front where you have an open differential. The differentials are the same for both vehicles. So now that we have an overview of the transfer case, we need to answer four major questions. First, how does the low range gear selection work? Second, how does the full time system create a 40-60 torque split? Third, how does the torsion center differential work? And finally, how does the part-time system select four-wheel drive? Okay, so how do we select between high and low gear? Well, it all starts with a planetary gear set. So a planetary gear set has a sun gear which rotates in the center. It has planets which rotate around that sun gear. And then it has a ring gear which rotates around the planets. And then connecting all of those planets is a planet carrier. 
Okay, so here we're just looking at a side view of a planetary gear set. So in blue, we have the sun gear. In red, we have the planets, which are connected to the planet carrier. And then we have the ring gear in black, which is fixed. Now, most of the time, you'll be driving in the high gear. So the planetary gear set isn't really doing anything. So when you're driving in high gear, you can pretty much ignore this planetary gear set. You've got your power coming in from the transmission, passing through that sun gear, which we're not changing the gear ratio, so a simple one-to-one -one gear ratio. And then that travels where you have this collar, which splines to the output of the sun gear. And so the sun gear is rotating this collar, which is splined to the output of your high and low range. So that is either traveling to the center differential in the case of the full-time four-wheel drive system, or it is traveling to the rear wheels in the case of the part-time four-wheel drive system. Okay, so what about when you want to go into four low to increase your wheel torque and improve your low speed control? Well, now we need to take advantage of that planetary gear set. So instead of the torque traveling directly from the sun gear to this collar and then to your output, now we're gonna use this collar and slide it over so it's no longer splined to the sun gear and instead it is splined to the planet carrier. So here we have what that looks like in four high and here we have what that looks like in four low and as you can see that torque path is going to be different so now it's going to be forced to travel through the planets and then to your output increasing that gear ratio. Okay, so let's see how this works with a real example. So you see that I've got a pink dot here on the ring gear. I've got a pink dot there in the center of the planet. And then I have this black screw, which is on our sun gear. So this is our input. So if I give this one full rotation, you can see our planet only moved a little bit. So a second full rotation, third, fourth, fifth, and then about five and a half. So this has about a five and a half gear reduction. Now, in the case of Toyota, they're using a 2.57 to one gear reduction. So it's traveling from that sun gear through the planet carrier to either the center differential for your full-time system or to the rear wheels for your part-time system. All right, so let's move on to the Land Cruiser's Torsen center differential. How does it create that 40-60 torque split? Okay, so for our Torsen center differential, once again, we're using a planetary gear set. So the output of our high low range gear selector were these two planets here which are the input for our center differential so the planets there in black are the input for this and the outputs are both the ring gear which is sending power to the rear wheels and the sun gear in blue in the center here which is sending power to the front wheels now, if your front wheels and your rear wheels are traveling at the same speed, in other words, you're traveling in a straight line and none of your tires are slipping, well, that means you have no relative motion between your gears. So the front wheels are traveling at the same speed as the rear wheels. So this entire thing is rotating as one unit with no relative motion. Well, now we can figure out why we get our torque split because torque is force times radius. So our sun gear has a smaller radius at which the force is applied versus the ring gear, which has a larger radius where that force is applied. So if that ratio of the radius of the sun gear is four to six, well then you have a 40-60 torque split because you have that radius of four times the force versus that radius of six times the force. So 40-60 split. Now again, that's only true if the front and rear axles are rotating at the same speed. So what happens when you go around a corner or one of the axles starts to slip? Well, now we need to understand how that torsen differential works. So here's where we get into the magic of torsen differentials. Once you have a speed differential between the front and the rear, as you can see, you're gonna to start to rotate these planets. Now, in the case of this torsen differential, your planets have spiral gear teeth. So once they start rotating, they create an axial load. So it starts pushing this pinion gear forward and it starts pushing that sun gear backwards. 
Now on this diagram, you can see these sections I've drawn in red. These are friction plates. So that axial force created within this planet is going to push it forward into a friction plate, which is going to try and match its speed with the rear wheel speed. Now at the same time, the sun gear, which is connected of course to your front wheels, is also being pressed up against a friction plate with this planet. And so what's happening here is everything is squeezing up against friction plates in order to match the speed of both the front and the rear. You're creating this braking force, this lockup within the differential. Now it's not actually going to lock up, it's going to allow for slip. So what it's doing by applying the brakes to everything is that it's taking torque from whatever is spinning faster and it's sending it to whatever is spinning slower. So if the rear axle is spinning faster, it slows it down and sends torque to the front. If the front axle is spinning faster, it slows it down and sends torque to the rear. All right, so what sort of torque splits does this translate into? So as we already mentioned, if the front axle and the rear axle are rotating at the same speed, well, you simply have that 40-60 split. If the front axle is rotating faster than the rear axle, well, you can send as much as 71% of the torque to the rear. And if the front axle is rotating slower than the rear axle, perhaps you have some rear slip, well, you can send as much as 53% of the torque to the front under acceleration. These numbers differ if you are decelerating, so that means the torque would be coming from the wheels instead of from the engine. Now with Toyota's full-time four-wheel drive system, you can also completely lock that center differential. So how this works is very simple. You have a collar which simply slides over, splining your planets to your ring gear, meaning locking them together. And in a differential, if you lock any two of the three, it forces everything to rotate together. So now your torque split, assuming everything has equal grip, 50-50, and then in theory, if the front axle or the rear axle has more available grip, you can send up to 100% of the torque to the front or up to 100% of the torque to the rear. Again, in theory, it's dependent on how strong that system is and what those levels of grip are front to rear. Okay, so we now understand the full-time four-wheel drive system. So how does the 4Runner's part-time system select between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive? So this is also quite simple. So we have our output from our high low range gear selection and that output simply sends that power to the rear wheels. Unless you use this collar here, which is splined to the chain assembly, which is powering those front tires. You slide that collar over, thus connecting the front wheels to the rear output. And so then you are in four wheel drive, as you can see here with that collar slid over and splined to both the front and the rear. Now, there is no differential here. Both are forced to rotate at the same speed, which means you should only do this when you are not driving on pavement. Now this leads us to our final question, which system is better? All right, so let's start with discussing the full-time four-wheel drive system. Again, this means all four wheels are always driven. Now, your front tires, when you're going around a turn, are going to have a larger radius than the rear tires behind them. That means the front axle is gonna be rotating at a faster speed than your rear axle. So that speed differential has to be taken up by a center differential. That's why you're allowed to drive a full-time four-wheel drive system on the road and why you're not allowed with a part-time system because these are forced to rotate at the same speed on a part-time and thus you'd have binding within that four-wheel drive system. So you can use a four-wheel drive full-time system in the rain, in the snow, when it's dry, there's performance benefits of course to four-wheel drive, and you can use it off-road. And so it is more capable on-road while matching equally the off-road capability of a part-time system because once you lock it, and you lock that rear, well, that's exactly the same as what's going on with the part-time system. It's locked in the center, it's locked in the rear. So they have the exact same strategy as far as putting the power down. They're going to behave the exact same way off-road when they're both in that mode. There's another slight advantage to the full-time four-wheel drive system on the new Land Cruiser, though. They have changed it versus previous versions, so now it is completely independent control of whether you're in high or low and whether you're with the center open or with the center locked. So that means you can be in low range gear without that center locked. That previously was not allowed on the old Land Cruisers or the limited 4Runner with the full-time four-wheel drive system. 
Now, as far as the part-time four-wheel drive system, it does enable you to select two-wheel drive. That is not an option with full-time. So, kind of cool that you have the option to be rear-wheel drive. However, that means if you're driving on the road in the rain, well, you're limited to two-wheel drive. So, it's a traction disadvantage because on pavement, whether it's, you know, light snow or intermittent snow, say you're going up a mountain road and it keeps switching between pavement and snow, well, you want to keep it in two-wheel drive so you don't have that binding occur within the system. There are also slight benefits when it comes to efficiency, cost, and weight. Now I do mean slight. You can look at some examples of forerunners with two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive full-time, and four-wheel drive part-time, and look, they all get the exact same EPA numbers. So yes, there is a slight advantage to running two-wheel drive. You're not rotating as many components, but modern four-wheel drive systems getting pretty efficient, and so the penalty there is not huge. Of course, off-road, super capable to have a part-time system just like the full-time system. One thing that does come up is people like to talk about durability, reliability. Is part-time actually better off-road compared to some full-time systems? And I think part of this comes to what is the system we're comparing against? Because some full-time systems will actually use a clutch-based system in order to allow for slip between the front and rear axle. And so you could find a limitation of that clutch pack where you might have a situation where that clutch is actually slipping. And so in that case, of course, that would not be ideal. But I don't think that really applies to Toyota here because they're using a splined collar, which is simply connecting your front output with your planets. And so in that scenario, you know, you're talking about a spline. There's no slip occurring. There's not going to be any speed differential between the front and the rear. So it's not something you have to worry about as far as clutch slip. So realistically, capability very easy equal off-road and then the full-time has that mode where you would not have on the part-time of being in low and not having that center differential locked. So giving an answer to that final question, which system is better? Well, there may be some reasons why you might want to select a part-time system. But if you're answering the question of which has more capability, which has the wider breadth of capability, because the full-time system is more capable on-road and equally capable off-road, that is the better four-wheel drive system as far as total capability. A huge thank you to Toyota's engineers who really helped me out with this video and providing information. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.